Have you ever looked around your house and thought, this place could use some more rats? So that's why this week, I'm hopping on a bandwagon and making a mouse house kitchen diorama to stick into the wall of my daughter's room so she can have Remy from Ratatouille cook her breakfast every morning. First things first, gotta find a wall suitable for demolition. Where I live, our houses are built with light wood framing, which means the walls are actually just two by four frames with evenly spaced studs, sandwiched by half inch drywall. If I can find a spot that's relatively unobstructed, you can make a lot of rodent friendly real estate. It's free real estate. Instead of making a big hole off the bat, I make some small holes to probe around before committing. This looks like a 13 inch gap here between the studs that should be unobstructed. So let's use that as our width. From here, I'm taking the rough measurements into the metaverse and I sketch out a rough 3D design using technology. This is mostly to stop myself from wasting expensive materials later down the line. And it's easier to iterate with different layouts that I'm probably gonna end up improvising on anyway. Another benefit of modeling out the design is I can sometimes get accurately measured parts exported for use with my shiny new 50 watt laser from GYK Cloud. I'm saying sometimes here because I have to remember to set the units correctly before cutting them out. And by the way, I think this particular laser gives the Glowforge a run for its money. It's about half the price, supports light burn, and is a lot safer than the open gantry fire hazard I've been using up until now. You can find a link in the description if you want to learn more about it, but I'll be making a more in-depth video on it soon. I'm lasering the wall shapes of the room out of uh, 3mm MDF as they allow me to make a relatively durable shell to withstand the love and attention that my 4 year old is sure to show it. The laser also lets me trivially add in patterns to the backsplash wall and flooring planks while also cutting out perfectly sized doorways. Remember how I said I exported the wrong size from Blender earlier? Well, this Blender gives me the opportunity to improvise and add an additional hallway section here, which actually comes in pretty handy later when I add in the battery pack and electronics. The added shape complexity also gives some much needed variation in this room. With the odd bulkhead at the back, the additional strips needed to make this jut out an extra 15 millimeters forward, and just the overall jank and cruff that only the finest vermin contractor could dream of. At this point, we've got a lot more work to do, but I just wanted to shed a bit more nuance on why I'm actually making this diorama in the first place. You see, I'm trying to find something other than Paw Patrol to get my daughter interested in these days. My other idea was to make something from the movie Brave, but I don't think Merida would be appropriate being shrunk down and made to live inside. Before going on a tangent, I was just finishing up the main shell of the diorama. Now that the glue has had a bit of time to dry, it's time to add some additional textures and details. I pulled out some balsa wood boards and scribing some details on them with a dental tool and a wire brush. This will go on the right side of the wall here since I messed up my dimensions and I don't have a backsplash pattern going all the way across. I also took the time to add in some more flooring to fill out the full space. Having different elevations and hand carved details helped sell that the kitchen was made by a tiny builder rat and not autonomous robots. For the ceiling here, I'm adding some exposed rafters at regular intervals, because I kind of like how that looks. Alright, it's time to cut out some cabinets and countertops. After spending a bit of time getting the dimensions for everything, I quickly cut these out on the GYK machine. It was super satisfying getting them all to fit on this 85 by 11 sheet of chipboard. I think I went from idea, design, cutting and assembly in less than an hour with these. Wow. I'm loving how fast I can iterate on ideas with the laser. Once assembled, I took some time fitting these around the walls, and I think even Remy approves. Oh yeah, and while I was assembling these, I also had this door being cut out, as well as the adjoining frame. It's going to be glued fixed in place back here, hinting at further rooms beyond. I'm leaving it slightly ajar, and for the back side I glued in some black poster board to make it appear like it fades into darkness, taking bets on how long it takes for this door to be ripped off. Let's start thinking about lighting. I totally intentionally left this cavity above the doorway here, which somehow fits a two-pack of AA batteries perfectly. I scribe a quick outline and cut it out with my utility knife. It's no laser, but it'll have to do at this stage. 
snug fit, so a bit of filing is needed to get the battery housing to join up perfectly. There, now when I attach the cover on the front side, it becomes removable by unscrewing this one little screw. I have a feeling we're going to go through batteries pretty quickly if this gets left on overnight. Let's also find a spot for an accessible switch. I had the brief idea of hooking this up to mains power, but the risk reward of it catching fire inside of a wall, not a fan. We'll run the wiring a bit later after we paint the room. For now, I took a bit more time making a backing and support brace for lining up the cabinets and added those battery housing decorations too. To make some handles for my cabinets, I had the idea of cutting off some barbecue skewer segments as round little knobs. I think these work quite well, don't you? To go above the extra French stove, I modeled and printed this range hood and kit bashed some toy pipe pieces to serve as the exhaust ducting. The cabinets were looking a bit plain at this point, so I decided to experiment a bit more. First with the pyrography tool and then with my Dremel. And oh boy, I kind of made a mess of them. To fix them up, I cut some thin strips of chipboard and laid them in a frame-like pattern around the doors. Luckily, I had only ruined the top cabinets, so now I had a mismatched set of cabinets. Which is why I decided to add a different set of knobs at this point, too. They're these dollar store stick-on rhinestones I've had lying around forever. There, now it looks intentionally different. Time to paint. I took most of the tiny pieces of kitchen decoration I've been churning out of my resin printer and gave them all a coat of unifying gray primer. The main shell got a rattle can primer treatment outside, and after a bit of dry brushing and off-white for highlights, I start adding some color with transparent washes and watered-down paint. I pick up the wood beams on the ceiling and give the walls a bit more of a warm yellow hue. For the rest of the colors, I went with retro teal and a red accent color motif I found on Pinterest. Teal for the major appliances and red for the little knickknacks on the counter. Time to finalize the wiring. I have the idea of a hooded light fixture in the middle of the room, casting a nice downward light in the kitchen. To anchor the fixture to the ceiling, I cut out some brass rods and measured holes in the fixture as well as the ceiling here. I'm running the wiring for the light through the ceiling as well, for realism. And some extra wires for the under cabinet lights too. Hey, look at that, it even works. Let's glue in the cabinets at this point since the lighting is in place. And you know what? Let's add the rest of those other cute little details as well to really make this kitchen come alive. What do you think, Remy? Is it time to relocate it into that wall we found earlier? Let's do it. First, I place the room face down on a piece of cardboard to get the outline traced. Then, cutting that out with some scissors, I head upstairs into my daughter's room once again. Trace the template onto the wall, and it's time to cut it out for real. Oh man, how did I not see this initially? It's a huge sewer drain here. <laughs> After some mild swearing and another set of holes later, I found a spot that would fit the kitchen unobstructed. With a bit of bracing underneath and some construction adhesive, it was time to permanently fix it in place. A bit of spackling and gap filling, sanding and painting. This is now ready to delight and expand the imagination of one little girl. I mean, how freaking cool is that? Built-in nightlight, too. I hope this inspires you to make random holes in your own walls and stick amazing miniatures for imaginary rodents in their place. My daughter is loving it so far, and she's even asked me to see if we can find more of Remy's rooms in the house, speculating on their location and function. Huge thanks to all my patrons for their continued support. And thanks so much for watching, hitting the like button, and even subscribing if you want to. I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers.